Welcome back to Sussex EVs. Today in part three we hear from Senior Diagnostic Technician Adam Cannell who talks to us about high voltage component maintenance and we watch as he removes a Tesla battery pack. Firstly, Adam gives us the lowdown on this particular patient that we can see here on the operating table. Uh, yeah, so here we have um, a Model S with the battery needs to come out for inspection, um, suspected water damage. Once we've got it down, um, we have to open up the lid, uh, inspect all the high voltage system and see what we're dealing with inside, to be fair. How does the water get in there? At the moment, we've had a, a number of possibilities through some of the breather valves on the battery itself, um, through some of the sealing um, where the rapid mate seals for the cooling system. At the moment it seems to be like the ceiling and the breathers that seem to be the problem um, or down to some of the ceiling of the lid itself um, but yeah so typically we pressure test these once we've stripped down and, and go back together to make sure that there's no leaks after we're done um, we've had one battery that actually had a hole in the case that obviously let a lot of water in causing a bit of an issue this is a tesla only problem by the sound of it but surely other makes have the same problem I know some of the VWs have problems with their case sealing and things like that. The problems that we're seeing on these Teslas is, is a Tesla design. They are lasting about 10 years, so it's not a design flaw, I would say. So these breather valves, are these, these the little orange things that are called umbrella valves, are they? Yeah, yeah, so the little umbrella valves, and they live down side of each of the modules. And they're there to see if there was uh, a module to, you know, get too hot and start to catch fire or anything like that. They're allowed to push and let all the vent or the gases out out the bottom of the vehicle rather than trying to push its way through the top of the lid. It just strikes me that the, the umbrella valves are, are on the edges where the, the sill would be. They're, they're quite low down, they're pointing downwards. Um, I don't understand the mechanics or the architecture of it, but if you're going to have a breather valve for an assembly, it seems to me like they're in a kind of a vulnerable position. Yeah, I mean, they have got a, um, a rail that lives over them, so they're not just completely exposed. Um, but what we found is that rail starts to get full of uh, road, dirt, mud, you know, grit and all sorts of stuff in there, which then actually starts, so the water's sitting on top of the valves. And when you reassemble the, the high voltage Tesla batteries, what sort of, apart from the, the pressure testing that you do, I guess you have to use special sealants or is any special tools or devices? Yeah, so we use a proper body sealant that's designed for sticking panels together that's waterproof. Tooling wise, we, we've got some like very extreme low pressure gauges and we blow it up and pretty much follow the Tesla routine to the letter for the pressure testing. And we'll leave that for quite some period as well. So we're happy that the leak down, you know, or well, there isn't any leak down, should I say. Um, we pressure test the cooling systems as well in the same manner uh, before the lids are all put back on to make sure everything internally is, is in spec and, and not going to leak. I think corrosion is kind of a bit of a recurring theme with, with the Tesla high voltage batteries. I, I guess the, the securing bolts would need to be changed and the pyro fuse cover on the older batteries, which is, sits on the top, yeah, so the pack 1.0s and 1.5s, the fuse uh, lid cover lives on top of the battery uh, and it's got quite a large amount of sealant around all the tops of the bolts, which ends up almost being like a little bowl for the water. Um, so that sits on there and um, that's one of the possible points of entry that we've seen with the earlier packs. Um, when they start to get so corroded, they almost become porous and you start getting moisture in inside and with the pack temperature going up and down we found that it starts to condense on the lid of the case and then start dripping down everywhere inside the battery um, causing quite a bit of corrosion to the internal electronics. There is an aircon drain um, lives right at the front and I say that tends to spill right on the front edge of the battery um, but also the, where the battery is it's very close to the wheel housing so when you're driving in the rain it, the wheels are just throwing water, moisture, you know, everything everywhere. Uh, it's quite a hostile environment, to be fair, for a battery. I guess um, water can get into the battery through um, the way you already described, but what about condensation? Yeah, so I don't know whether these are built in a, in a, in a dry room when they're, you know, assembled at the factory, um, but because of the temperatures rising and falling in there, condensation definitely seems to be a bit of a problem. All the modules themselves have actually got like a little plastic sort of outer case, uh, and that starts to end up a bit like a greenhouse it sort of clings to the top and then once it gets into a drip it then will then drip through straight through the module um, 
so it t tends to be the, the front modules at, at the very front of the pack, um, but we have seen corrosion all around the pack, which would be more condensation. I'm beginning to wonder if perhaps what Tesla need to do is to have a little drain plug. This is sort of a semi-serious point, that um, if you could drain that condensation or just water out earlier, once every four years or so, would that help? The only problem you're going to have is that most of the modules are actually sealed off inside. Um, so there's like, bars that run around all the modules and the case is then glued down. So they're, they're kind of their own separate units. And that's why they've got the umbrella valves on the end of each unit. So if there was any problems in there, it can then vent off and not cause any problems to the modules next door. However, there are little channels that water can, can flow through and obviously humid air as well. I've heard it alleged that a lot of supercharging could be a good thing if it helps get rid of some of that internal condensation. I don't know if there's any merit in that. Certainly heat will help with the condensation as long as the condensation's got somewhere to go um, and not then collecting somewhere and, and starting to pull. You know, if it's able to breathe quite happily, then there's a potential for it to breathe and come straight out the pack. Um, the, the umbrella valves aren't designed just to open and close and let the pack breathe. They're more of a, a safety feature, if, you know, if there was ever a, um, a, a runaway, a thermal runaway in the pack. If the cooling system is in good nick, hopefully that should take away the excess heat from the pack. Yeah, so the car's designed to be fast charged. It's not that it can't be. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing it to try and dry a pack. Obviously, you don't just work on Tesla high voltage batteries. So how do you think the, the the actual uh, construction quality or design of the, the battery packs, how does it differ with other manufacturers? Tesla use uh, an 18650 cell, so it's just a little bit bigger than a, a sort of AA battery, um, and they use lots and lots of them. So they've, they've got a little bit of airflow around each of the cells, and they've got coolant that runs around all those as well. So they, they can do little work and get the same output, um, whereas some of the other manufacturers use some quite big chunky bricks um, which are doing quite a heavy load themselves and some of the ones in the middle don't have that airflow uh, or coolant to be able to, to sort of rob that heat from you know from the whole cell itself and um, so typically we found those suffer much more with degradation compared to what we've seen on the Teslas. Um, I'm actually quite a big fan of the Tesla packs they they are very well put together uh, most of the vehicles we've seen are you know have done quite a bit of mileage now and had some of them had a bit quite a hard life um, and the batteries you know they're, they're still very strong um, albeit sometimes wet and a bit corroded and, and things like that but they are a strong battery. So the actual individual cells are pretty good for degradation the only weak point is uh, is the water ingress. Then. So far yeah I mean I know these batteries will suffer with degradation that's high voltage batteries they do uh, and again it really depends on how it's been it's been treated you know lots of fast charging lots of rapid discharging will cause degradation but yeah so far it seems to be more um, failed electronics and water ingress that's causing causing these vehicles not to start or uh, you know causing charging problems and balance problems and things like that. You've done quite a few Nissan Leaf uh, battery swaps have you and reconditions? Yeah we've done quite a few Nissans now yeah. I think they um, they have quite short lives because they can't get rid of the heat quite so well. The Nissan Leaf doesn't have any thermal management in the battery pack itself um, some of the modules um, have got quite a lot of space around them whereas the rear stack they are sort of stacked vertical so we found that the modules that are in the middle they're getting heated from both sides from the modules next door they, they can't lose that heat very well. They bolted onto quite thick metal which you know acts as a bit of a heat sink but once that temperature's come up as well it's, it's got nowhere to go uh, and it, again you know without being able to sort of control its environment it, the degradation does set in. I know you're doing repairs on high voltage systems on, on legacy manufacturers like Mini, uh, Porsche, BMW. How are they coming along in terms of battery technology uh, compared with Tesla? They're probably a bit better and other aspects they're a little bit worse. I feel that the Tesla designs their own packs rather than going to buy something off the shelf. Uh, it looks like some of the other manufacturers may have sort of gone down a more of a ready ready made solution from an, from another company. Um, some of the vehicles have been are pretty much the same as their petrol diesel counterparts but been retrofitted with a uh, you know um, high, high speed battery etc. Um, so that their design isn't so good because they're not ground ground up EV. 
whereas some of the other ones we some of the we've done ix3 recently uh, and that was very pleasant to work on the the lids are bolted down uh, with gaskets so we can replace those and they've all got pros and cons mm. uh, it's still very early days i think you know uh, there's still a few creases to iron out uh, which i believe the the newer generation teslas the model 3 and the model y the battery packs are vastly different to their earlier stuff um, so they they are very good at putting things right as they go tesla but they do change a lot you can have two vehicles that are very similar age quite the architecture underneath can be quite different so yeah it's a little bit of a challenge at times to to get ahead with that but whereas with the, some of the german stuff their information systems are just as polished as they were with the petrol diesel so obtaining the information wiring diagrams etc is uh, makes it much easier you know i can order parts for a volkswagen high voltage battery the same as i can a spark plug just as easy um, whereas tesla don't really sell anything inside so that's why we're trying to be quite creative on how we repair these things i guess you have to you might sometimes have to use reconditioned or rather just used models modules from broken vehicles you can't actually buy new internal parts from tesla so most of it is we are trying to recycle uh, recondition and ev everything that we do fit into a vehicle we would uh, run a capacity test you know run some checks make sure everything's all good and try and match it to the vehicle that we're putting in for the sort of same age mileage and usage um, so we get the best balance out of the battery pack itself do you have any idea how how the the main manufacturers feel about uh, cedar electric working on high voltage stuff are they quite happy are they glad to do it perhaps i'm not too sure to be honest um, i think some may be happy some may not be so happy um, but we are following their routines that are set for all these jobs uh, so we are exceeding their expectations um, with anything that we do uh, you know all the, the right correct torque settings the correct coolants you know everything that we use um, either comes from the manufacturer or we're using their information system to do it uh, and we try and we put our own bit on top just to make sure that we're happy with what we've done so we try and exceed a dealer level going back to tesla or the tesla model s um coolant changes is that something should be done once every i don't know hundred thousand miles or something or best to leave it alone by what i hear tesla say they don't need servicing at all um again we would use the information system for that vin and inspect that but i've not seen them having any coolant changes um, we replace the coolant when we do a battery job um, just it's just the right thing to do uh, make sure everything's nice new and fresh um, and you know completely bled properly again temperature problems in batteries not something you want to run into so make sure the coolant's the the right strength etc um, so there's no corrosion inside the, the coolant channels and things like that how about changing the, the oil on the the tesla gearboxes I tesla again say don't bother but they used to um, there are a lot of manufacturers that say they have uh, oil for life um, it really depends on what they uh, see as a life of the vehicle. You know, often it is around 100,000 miles. It's not forever, which some people think. I personally, I would get mine done more regularly than than the manufacturer says. It's a, a, often a bare, you know, minimum standard that they're trying to achieve. They want to keep the cost of ownership uh, to a minimum. Um, but personally. I, I would do these things every every five years, you know, or depending on the mileage and the use of the vehicle. But mm. it certainly can't hurt to have nice fresh coolant and fresh oil in the vehicle. Okay, Adam, I understand you're going to uh, lower the high voltage battery. Is it all right if we stick around and? Yeah, yeah. Just stay behind the uh, the yellow stuff, and you should be absolutely fine. <laughs> right, if you go down the front end, just make sure we're good there. This one looks like it's had a BMS repair on here, look. It's new sealant. Same in. Yeah.
that'll be the cause of that. Yeah, this is a classic um, example of a corroded fusion lid cover. That's a bad one. Yeah, she, it's actually very soft as well, so I suspect water started to make its way through there. Um, the ceiling's been broken, so Tesla have actually removed the high voltage fuse from this pack um, due to the fault it's got, um, just for safety safety reasons. So that typically these bolts are actually completely sealed up. Um, <laughs> there's a new lid that this one will be having when we finally go back together. And um, you can see that it's uh, much nicer. This is it's actually very, very soft. I could probably push my fingers through it. I won't, obviously, because there's some... Uh, and we're also in the process of making our own ones, aren't we? Yeah, so we're going to have some of these, our own one of these manufactured soon. Um, so we can offer them that be much better material, uh, much more sturdy. Uh, so this is one of the plastic housings that lives around one of the uh, Tesla modules. And you can see that it's absolutely um, full of corrosion. This is parts of the cells and, and the bus bars inside starting to corrode and actually start breaking up. This was... Um, from a wet, a very wet battery, um, so this module needed to be um, dismantled and disposed of correctly. Um, we've kept this just so we can see um, and show you guys, you know, how bad they can get. Um, typically, they're not as bad as this. This is a, you know, a very bad example. But the water gets trapped in it when it starts flowing over. It's actually got nowhere to go. Um, so it sort of sits in the bottom and just starts eating, eating all the module alive. So in the case of Tesla, for example, are you able to do remote diagnosis to any extent on a, on a dead car? So it is a possibility. Um, you'd have to use a toolbox to do that and have the customer's uh, approval. Um, it's something we're looking into at the moment, see whether we want to do that. Because Tesla, they would allow that, I think. They do sell that, that toolbox. We've got the tool, um, but we pay a subscription. So um, we've got another tool that we use, which we is up front and we can use it all day long without having to pay any more. Uh, if we want to use Toolbox we either pay on an, uh, an hourly rate, a daily rate or a monthly rate. It's not the cheap, especially when you're doing R&D, you don't really want to be on the clock doing these things. Adam from Cedar Electric, thanks very much for your time today. Thank you. A huge thank you to Senior Diagnostic Technician Adam Cannell. Next time in part four, director and master technician Matt Kopp explains the setup at Cedar Electric and where the high voltage magic happens. Don't forget to like and subscribe as it really helps us to grow the channel.